also, you guys, I remember when God was showing me, he was, at the time he showed me my faith wasn't where I thought it was. My faith wasn't really at a level of me trusting God wholeheartedly. I only trust him as far as I can touch him, if you will. Mm -hmm. As far as I can control it, that's how much I had faith in it. And God said, no, 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 no. I need your faith to be at a level of none control. Put your hand behind your back and let me handle everything. It's one thing to say, I, I trust God, but yet you don't trust the God that you say that lives in your spouse. Think about what I just said. Oh, we trust God when it's convenient, but it's hard to trust God. The same God we say live in our spouse, we can't trust that God to make sure that that, that God will talk and teach and, and, and educate and lead and guide the spouse in our finances. And that's what God was showing me. He says, sweetheart, you don't make the money. Matter of fact, Vito don't make the money. Mm -hmm, absolutely. He said, he <laughs> is the provider. And that's where we get wrong. Who is really the provider? We have been taught the absolutely. man is the provider, y'all. And we have been taught wrong. No, God provides all things. And he can use whatever vessel he wants to use. That's why my mind was so jacked up in the beginning because I felt like the man should be bringing home the bacon because that's what society and religion has taught us. Yeah. He has to be making all this money. He has to take care of you. No, God takes care of me. Before there was a man, there was a God that took care of Marshall. Right. And that's the part we have to understand. The same God that kept us when we were single, it's the same God that's going to keep you while you're married. So why, why, Michelle, were you so afraid, it was fear, that allowed you to continue to have that single mindset where if something happened, let me tell you where it came from, because every example I had ended in divorce. Mm -hmm. I never saw a successful marriage. Let that sink in. The only examples I had was people getting the divorce. Mm -hmm. So my mom, divorce. My, my, my godparents, divorce. Everybody I knew, divorce. My best friend and her husband, divorce. Everybody I knew was, was divorced. And looking at them trying to now live a life of singlehood, trying to get back on their feet with no money and struggling, that's all Marshall knew. And one thing I said, Lord, that would not be me. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm going to make sure I have my stash to the side. I'm going to make sure that if he decides to leave me, I have me some money. Not understanding that's a world mentality. It's because, not faith. Because when it's you, not faith, it's fear. Because when you are, that's the mentality that you have when you hooked up with somebody that God never intended Absolutely. for you to be with. That's his flesh, especially. Hear people. what I'm saying. If I had that mentality, I had it. That mentality came from me seeing fleshly hookups and it ended fleshly. So that's the mentality I thought I needed to go into a marriage mm -hmm. because I didn't have an example of godly hookups. But when God hooked this right here up, the Holy Spirit had to teach me what it was about. Mm -hmm. He had to teach me, no, I'm still, I'm still your provider. All I'm going to do now is provide for both of you. You're not the provider. He's not the provider. I'm going to use y'all as the vessel to provide what I need for Absolutely. this home. Because what happens is when he provides and his glory falls and sheds upon us, guess who get glorified? God. That's right. When we feel like it's us doing it all, who get glorified? Us. us. So now we have... And glorified going to be stale too. And we have then replaced ourselves with God. So God said, oh, you don't need me? Well, I'm going to step back and let you do it. And I'm going to show you. It's and going down. You're going it's down. going down. <laughs> you going down. It's going down. Absolutely. So I would rather trust God, trust the God in him, you say the key word, and, trust. And, ver and, and, and vice versa, Absolutely. and allow God to rain down his blessings without the division, without the confusion. Because I'm telling you, y'all, when you walk into a marriage already with a divorce option, guess what the enemy's gonna do? 
Every single thing that happens, you're going to think about divorce. Y'all, we first got married. That's the first thing I kept thinking about. Well, we need to get a divorce. I don't want to be in this no more. Tell it, <laughs> every little thing. Tell it, Miss Marshall. No Go ahead, girl. Tell it. <laughs> God, no. I ain't know you were going to tell them that. Because I had the mentality that I was still single. And I didn't understand when you get into marriage, you won, baby. When, and y'all have to understand, when you disrespect your spouse, you're disrespecting yourself. Yep. And you're disrespecting, you're disrespecting God, God you're because disrespecting that God. Is, that, that's God's child. Mm -hmm. When you disrespect the finances, you're disrespecting God. If he can't trust you with the big, I mean with the little, how do you expect him to trust you with much? And let me say this here. Let me say this. When you get connected... First of all, it's based on faith. Because I had to believe that God really put us together. Now remember, if you guys remember our videos that we talked about how God put us together and how, uh, what was it, how God, uh, uh, and what, what was the title of it? Um, how God told you I was, uh, you're, I was you're, right, right, but, I but wasn't she convinced. wasn't convinced. <laughs> Check that video out. That I had she wasn't convinced. That. And the reason why she wasn't convinced because she was still blinded with her eyes. But listen, God chose her for me. I didn't choose her. God chose her for me. Now, when God makes up his mind to choose who he wants to be connected, you may not have the level of faith that you think you're supposed to have mm -hmm. in order for that thing to come to a full flourishing. You don't need the faith. You just need a great faith of a mustard seed. And even when you don't have a little a degree, the faith of a mustard seed, God will put somebody in your path, pathway that will help you for with your faith, for your faith to grow just a little bit so you can just believe just a little. Because mm -hmm. she had a friend and still do. Her best friend was the one that told her, girl, this is God. Even though still, she was like, I see her but. He doesn't, he doesn't match my list. He doesn't, yeah, yeah. He doesn't fit my personal preference. But she was like, this is God. But then at the same time, there was something in her. I was like, yeah, this is God. But golly, why is it not like the way I want it? Mm -hmm. See, a little grain of mustard seed of faith. That's all you need. That's all I had. And that's all she <laughs> needed in order for this thing to move. Now, listen. In order for it to continue to stay to where it grows, you still need the faith. See, I can listen. I can lean on what God told me. She only can go by what God told me with confirmation now. But it ain't like God came to her and said, Vito won't be your husband. Mm -mm. <laughs> God didn't come to me and say, Marshall is going to be your husband. He said, the very one who I've chosen for you, you're going to feel inadequate. And then I said, well, Lord, how would I know it's her? How would I know? Then I don't make all these mistakes every time I turn. You told me every woman that I've chosen, I, I messed up and I'm the one chosen, not you. How am I going to know? He said, because when you ask her, what do you see in me? She's going to say, God showed me your heart. That's how you're going to know it's her. He never tell me her name. He never tell me her height. He never tell me what she looked like. He never tell me her shape. He never tell me where she stayed at. He never even, I ain't never know who it was her. But, I, but when that took place, that is my foundation that I lean on all the time. And even when she was talking that talk about, well, you know what, I, I'm just, I, I'm just, I, 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 don't wanna, I, I don't even want to do this no more. I, and, and I'm like, look at her, Lord. Look at it. It didn't push me away. You know why? Because I knew what God told me. And I knew what God told her. But she was still struggling with giving up her will. And she was still struggling. She was allowing that fear to implement every now and then. That's why she used to have dreams about me going out and messing around. Because she was still afraid. The enemy would try to use her past to try to make her believe that her present was going to do the same thing what she was treated like in her past. Mm -hmm. And the enemy was trying to trick her. But God had more power. Mm -hmm. 
Because I will go to God and say, God, you need to show her that I am not what the enemy is showing her. See, we had our little moments. We had our little times. But God still put it together. God still put this and orchestrated this together. That's what I'm trying. That's what we're trying to tell you. It's not going to be perfect. And both of you still going to go through your process of being delivered and being healed and progressing in the marriage that you are already going to be in. But one thing you can always say, I have my testimony. I can still tell the testimony. 20 years from now, I can still tell you what God told me when, in March when I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Getting my truck unloaded or well, getting my truck loaded. So, it's faith. You believe that God told you that this person is the one that he has put. Now, this is everything comes. Listen, I ain't talking about you believing and hoping that he is the one. We ain't talking about that. <laughs> hoping, wishing, and praying. Wishing, and hoping, and praying. Five years go by and they, still nothing happened. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when God moves, he moves. When God makes up his mind to move, he moves quickly. When God makes up his mind to move, he moves quickly. To us, it seems like that it's been a long time. But God's like, no, I'm just waiting for the right time for me to implement my will to be done. And when God did it, bam, he did it. So it takes the faith, even after you get married, it takes faith. For you to still submit your will to God. Because if you don't. You're going to still be wrestling back and forth. Right. With your will and his will. While you are in the marriage. You have to completely give up your will. While you are in. Wait a minute. You have to completely give up your will. While you are in your process of singleness. You have to completely give up your will. While God connects you. And you're going through your courtship. After your courtship and when you say I do, you still got to completely give up your will. After the first year of your marriage, you still got to completely submit your will. After the second year of marriage, you still got to completely submit your will. After the third year of marriage, you still got to completely submit your will. Every day that God blesses you to wake up with your husband or every day that God blesses you to wake up with your wife, my brother, you still got to completely submit your will. Both of you have to submit your will to God so both of you can be in sync with each other. Because as both of you submit your will to God, both of you will be as one. But if one of you submit your will to God and the other one doesn't want to submit, well, the one who's still submitting has to stay there and be patient to the other one. God deals with the other one and, and, and teaches the other one to submit their will. And once that person realizes that they have not been submitting their will to God, and now they're ready to submit their will to God, now they will join together with the one who has been standing there waiting as they submit their will. Because sometimes in the marriage, both of you don't submit your will to God just like that. One of you will and the other one won't. Why the other one will? The other one has to wait till the one submit their will. But but because the other one had to submit their will, God will still sustain you to be patient until the other one submit their will.